Hey, what's up guys? Derek here. Today I am walking you through a SAM.gov solicitation for ISO 9001 certification services. And today we're actually answering three specific questions. Number one, what is the job? Number two, do I want to respond to this job? And then number three, if so, how do I respond to it? So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Like I've done in the past, I am going to be using a Word doc just to help pull some of the information that we're going to be needing to extract to help answer these questions. So the first thing I'd like to note is really, it's really the title. So I'm going to grab that. And these are all things that you can feel free to do if you're going to be practicing along. The next thing I like to look at as we're just uncovering this is the actual due date. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. That's due March 21st at 4 p.m., which is a week from today. So that's the due date. Next, we'll look at the set aside. So this is woman owned small business. So if you're not a certified woman owned small business, you would not be able to bid on this. Next, we have the NAICS code. So this all just kind of gives us some good information up front about how this procurement is going to be done. They're telling us this is 100% set aside for women owned small business and the NAICS code, so a bit of repeat information here as well. They are telling us up front this is an RFQ, so this is a request for quote. We know that that's gonna be heavily focused on the price and there's probably not gonna be a lengthy involved proposal process since this is an RFQ and it's not an RFP, request for proposal. They're saying this quote is being issued for ISO 9001 2015 certification services for the Nav Air Fleet Readiness Center. And they're not really telling us too much more other than to submit our responses to Eldon Gruber. And they do have a um, one RFQ, which is the solicitation document itself. That's where all the information is gonna be stored. So we can go ahead and jump into that next. So we have our standard form. This is actually standard form 18, very similar to the other standard forms that we've seen in the past. And what I'm looking for right now is I'm still trying to answer this question about what is the job? And we kind of know at you know a, a glance that it is for ISO services, but I'm coming down to the actual statement of work, the SOW, to try and get a bit more details and information to answer what is this job. So they're telling us just reading a few sentences in the proposed third party certification will enable VRT customers and command to have assurance that the VRT quality management system meets their requirements. So a little bit as to why and the what behind this. And then coming down to the requirements, they're telling us um, they're looking for two VRT sites. It's actually Norfolk, Virginia, and also Mayport, Florida. They're telling us specifically a few bullet points here, shall provide a mock certification audit. And if there are any gaps or deficiencies, you shall provide the technical point of contact with a report for those and then a pre-assessment. And then they're doing the stages one, two for the audit. So if you or your company, your small business was going to be performing this, or say you were gonna be working with another woman-owned small business who provides these services and kind of partner with them, since this is a woman-owned small business set aside, um, what you would be doing is making sure you follow and add here to these points. Now, the other thing that kind of jumped out to me is this table. They're showing us auditor days for the initial stages and then the surveillance period and then the recertification audit as well. So they're giving us a bit more details on that requirement. And lastly, what jumped out to me was actually these pricing clins. And pricing clins can actually do really well at helping you to answer what is the job because they're telling you what to price for. So that's really tightening this thing down, telling you what you're gonna be pricing for, which hand in hand is really gonna be telling you about the work that matters. So this first pricing clin 0001 is for that pre-assessment audit. So we know number one, this it contains a pre-assessment audit. Next, number two, a stage one and two audit. So now we know there's also gonna be a stage one and two audit required for this because we have to price separately for it. And then we also have a surveillance audit for an option one, and then also for an option two. And that's about it. So there are some more additional details in terms of what this job is. It does not look very uh, involved. It does not look very complicated rather. Um, it's just kind of very straight to the point into what this particular job is being advertised as, which is those certification services for ISO 9001. So we're gonna kind of stop there and say, for now, 
this is a good enough answer. I do recommend that you, you spend a lot of your reading time going through the statement of work. But for now, you know, it's not, it's not very long. And uh, I think we kind of got the crux of it. So now the next question we want to quickly answer is, do I want to bid on this? This gets into a little bit of formulating your own uh, capture management bid, no bid process. So there's a few interesting questions to consider. So one thing that's really important is when is this due? You don't want to start working on a bid, a proposal response or a quote in this case, if you don't have enough time to gather that and put together your package to send off to contracting. So again, the due date is March 21st. We've already extracted that. Today is the 14th at the time of recording this, which means we have about a week. I would say it's probably cutting it close. So we can say, um, do I have enough time to respond? We could say cutting it close, but can do. So depending on really your ability to get a price on this, because it's a quote, you're not gonna have some lengthy proposal thing required. Um, that is really gonna be the main thing for answering this particular question. I think it's doable, but it would be cutting it close. Um, the next thing to consider, again, information that we've pulled it out is the set aside. Do I have a woman or small business set aside? If you, if you don't, you don't stand a chance because this is going to go to a prime federal contractor who has this um, certification and it's in their SAM deck of profile, all that stuff. So it's very much a make or break, a go or a no go. So these are two really easy questions to answer. Um, do I wanna even bid on this thing, right? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. What is required in the response? Well, we didn't really get too far into that yet. So uh, we did see the pricing cleanse. Again, these are the cleanse. So we've identified this. And that's about as far as we've gotten through this document. And there were no other attachments too. So we have our delivery section, wide area workflow. That's how you're going to invoice clauses. And really what I'm looking for is an instruction offers, reps and certs, evaluation factors, um, that sort of stuff. Not the reps and certs, just the sections L and M, instructions and evaluation. And it looks like it ends at the reps and certs. So they have not included, um, just by glance, any sort of uh, instructions for proposal package, which is actually commonplace for an RFQ, which lets you know that, you know, you, you gotta fill out this pricing cleanse. That's how you need to respond to this. It's actually pretty pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, so what is required in the response? Uh, responding to uh, pricing cleanse, did not find sections L and M for instruction and evaluation. So do I wanna bid on this knowing this? So I would say yes, because that's, that's pretty easy. That's not going to prohibit me, but every coin has two sides. So you also have to consider, well, Hey, if it's that easy, there may be more competition on this thing too, as well. So that's something that you would have to, you know, consider if this is going to be you kind of, you know, playing the numbers game, putting some stuff up on the board, getting ex experience. This could be something that wouldn't take a whole lot of your time that would get you in the running to even possibly win this thing. I would expect to see though, something like an evaluation factor that tells me this is gonna be an LPTA, lowest price, and I, I did not see that. So we don't know um, without digging more into this, how the winning bidder will be chosen. And I always like to see that before, you know, making a go, no go, uh, but you can assume for most RFQs, most, not all, that it is going to be more of a uh, lowest price type bid. So you do wanna bid competitively, you're probably not wanting to put a whole lot of cushion in this particular uh, one if you're going after it. And you can always ask contracting too. You know, in our small business incubator, first fed bid, you know, I'm teaching clients, hey, you're the expert in your industry. You're the one who's providing this service or, you know, you're working with a company to provide this service in some cases. Stand your ground. If you need more information or if something is unclear, submit that request for information to contracting. It's an RFI and you just you know cite whatever section your question is from, unless it's a general question, and you just send that off to contracting, and, and oftentimes um, they do respond with a helpful answer that helps you with your, your bidding strategy. So if you're wanting more information, you know also don't just take what you have, feel free to ask to get more 
because that is a, a very standard industry practice. And like I said, I do encourage you know everybody in our first Fed bid incubator um, to do that and start practicing doing that. So I would you know pass the same advice on to you here on YouTube to start doing that as well if you need more information. But for now, I'm working with what we have. You know, we have a limited amount of time, so we're just kind of going to make make the assumption for now, which is really what this is. It's really building a puzzle. And the thing is, you have a lot of missing pieces. So you're just working with those puzzle pieces that you do have to try and fill in those pieces that you don't. So the last question that we're, we're really answering here is, um, you know, how do I respond to this? And if we had identified a section L and M, we would have looked into that a bit, uh, but we didn't. So this question is almost already answered. Again, pretty easy. How do I respond to this? You're gonna fill out the SF18 form, was it? They gave us an 18 this time. Yeah, SF uh, standard form 18. You're gonna print, sign, and date this bad boy when you go to respond to this. You're also going to fill out these pricing claims. So in this case, you're gonna put an amount here and an amount here. And it's gonna be the same number because the quantity is one and it's a lot, which is you know like also very similar to job. It's just one price for this pre-assessment. And then coming down, it's, it's one lot again for the stage one and two audits and then also for the option year. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, four prices, I guess, unless I missed the line. That you need to come up with and put into here for the options and the different stages, right? So four prices for stages and options. And, you know, I didn't really see anything else except for, you know, we had the reps and certs in here. Wherever you see these little boxes, see representations, you gotta, you know, go through and check these boxes. Also, when you register in SAM.gov, if you go to the table of contents, you'll see something in there called representations and certifications. Guess what? You filled all this out already, so you can also download those from your SAM.gov um, profile. In this case, uh, looks like they didn't include all of them, so it might just be easier to check these boxes. So, uh, reps and certs, check the boxes. So, fill out that SF. 18 form, I keep wanting to say SF 14, 18, or because of the SF 1449 form, um, fill out those pricing cleans and do those reps inserts in the boxes, guys. Like pretty much spoon feeding this one to you because there is, you know, not that much to go. You know, it's 24 page document. So even for a solicitation, it's small. Coming back to the SAM.gov page, there's nothing else here. So they're looking for a quote for the ISO 9001 services. A lot of it's, almost all of it's just gonna be based on the pricing. Is the price gonna be right for you? You know, I don't know. Maybe you could win this thing, especially if you're in the professional services space and especially if you are a woman-owned small business. I mean, doesn't really get that much more straightforward than this. So we have fully answered all the questions. What is the job? Do I wanna bid on it? And how do I respond to it? This is a very kind of easy, almost overgeneralized example but I just kind of want to show you how asking some simple questions can be powerful and kind of showing you how to go about finding this information. And so you can move forward and make data-based decisions, informed decisions as a small business team of one, two, or three guys. You don't have the luxury of spending a whole lot of time. You got to work smarter, not harder. And that's what I'm trying to help you do here on the channel. So we'll go ahead and end this one for today. Let me know if you like this video, if you like the new overlay, if this was something that was helpful to you. Um, and, and also, you know, as you can see in, in the description as well, um, if you're looking for additional support, you want to know how to go further into the bidding proposal writing process. If you need help actually prospecting on SAM.gov, finding opportunities like this that are a match for your business, um, feel free to learn more and apply. Just check the link in the description of this video and uh, maybe we can work together if it's something that is a good fit for you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.